Yeah, we're good. Okay. I was being a bird. Don't mind me. <laughs> I'll probably use that in the intro. That's uh, what I'm uh, uh, you ready? I am indeed. Okay. Are you ready? I am ever ready. <laughs> it depends on it. Depends on where I'm at at the moment. <laughs> so, um, waiting on you. What? You ready? Yep, I'm good. Okay. <laughs> <sighs> hey people, so uh, we got a special special guest. This is not something we normally do, but <laughs> what the hell. <laughs> so uh, we we've already done one interview and I have to I have to say that I apologize the video that we got off your end, it got corrupted. So <laughs> I, I have been corrupted and I'm <laughs> so I think that's fair. So <laughs> Um, so yeah. hello for those of you who only heard my voice in the past. My yeah. name is Lee Harrington. <laughs> yeah. So he's corrupted. Yeah, he <laughs> so what, one of the things. So so everybody knows what I want to want to talk to Lee about is um, we went over a little of your journey before, yeah. but I wanted to get into the the transitionary phase because I think. Uh, for those who don't know um, Lee's story, uh, for you didn't get to see the first interview or you don't know Lee, uh, Lee is a female to male transgender. Transgender um, person. Transgender person. person. Not a, yeah. uh, just, yeah, no, no. It, if, if I say something wrong, just It's, it's a nuanced me. conversation. Yeah. We just keep moving forward. <laughs> but, yeah. um, and, I, and has been involved with the community before and after yeah. and during transition and that is a conversation that I have not been able to have, um, especially from a female to male, you know, point of view. I have one of my best friends, I, I think I said before, um, one of the people I consider a mentor was a female to male, um, female to male as well. And I learned so much and that was amazing, but I never got to have that conversation with them. And so it's kind of like... I know that your experience and his experience were not the same. Yeah, every um, single person's journey. Right, is and that's different. and that's what I. But I. But it's just that getting into the into the headspace of yeah. going through it. So, um, for those who don't know, let's kind of back up yeah, to um, we. You know, you start in the community too early, yeah. um, which but is a kind a kind way of saying it. Yeah. Um, and uh, when I first started, came into the kink community, I was um, I was a big titted girl. Like my during the height of my model, my, my fetish modeling, I was a thirty eight double D, twenty eight forty two at five foot eleven. Wow. Um, which was Betty. P uh, sorry. Uh, uh, what is her name? Why am I forgetting it? Blonde hair. Nope. I lost oh, it. Uh, Pamela uh, Anderson. No. 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 Marley, no. Uh, no. Doesn't uh, matter. Anyway, my reference. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I trying to be clever. Trust me, I'll, 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 I'll probably throw a It's throw those it. awkward moments when you I know who you're talking. I know you're talking it. about. But, yeah. Um. Anyway, so I used to do fetish modeling. Um. But even before then, like I was a curvy girl, and uh, I have been sexually promiscuous and adventurous my whole life. And so, as a woman in the community, like who had curves and who was a switch and, um. And was queer slash bisexual slash whatever I was um, and am. Uh, it meant that I had access to a lot of play partners. Right. And so for you know between when I came into the scene in 26 when I decided to, to gender transition, like I had access to a lot of lovers and a lot of play partners. And so when I first uh, when I was 25 shaved my head and then later on at 26 decided to, to medically transition. Um, publicly decided to and, and was going to go down that path uh, it was really interesting to watch other people's responses specifically the heterosexual men that I played with Right. Mm -hmm. um, some of the lesbian women but mostly it was the heterosexual men who then had to reframe the question of if I have had sex with her who is now him am I actually straight Right. and or can I still have that person be my lover and I had some play partners of mine um, who were straight men, who were just like, you know what, whatever, you're the exception, I care about playing with you. Right. That they but were that, what, when, when you first, 
I, I mean, I hate, it's, yeah. I don't know if the word choice is the right um, word. I know awareness. a lot of people. Uh, awareness. Well, aware, so, so there's but, layers but, this question, because and every transgender person is different. For me, um, when I was a teenager, I was asked if I was transgender by my first master. Mm-hmm. And um, because he was a predominantly gay man, we would call him queer nowadays, but, um, and, uh, and by man, I mean the same age bracket as myself at the time, uh, within a couple of years. And, uh, and I didn't think that I could be trans because I wasn't, a, like, as I phrased it at the time, I wasn't a football player who wears dresses. Because as a teenager, that's like, that was my mm. consciousness right. level around what transgender people are. Um, and well, I mean, I, I think it's also fair to say that this was when you were going through this process was before the internet existed as, yeah, it, as it currently this exists. This is 94, 95. So uh, yeah. access to information during that time period. Much smaller. Was I mean not only with with in respects to the King community at large, but especially within the in that community because it was very very underground. Well, yes, no, no. Um, Christine Jorgensen ends up medically transitioning right. in public during World War right after World War Two. No, no, I, I, this is not media. Like this is not new stuff. What it was about was who I was exposed to. Because mm. trans women at the time, for myself in the 80s and 90s, transgender women are who ended up getting put on Jerry Springer. Right. Right. right? Well, so that's what transgender I was saying. Was a freak is show, and right. it was that, my body. But that's where, and that's, and that's the idea. The okay. thing is that it's like the. In the community and being around the gay community, it was something that existed. But in the heterosexual community, um, what is now the pan community, um, yeah, the in kink, the world. right? It was just not something that was talked about. I think it, it's really it, for me, it, for me, yeah. from where, when I, it was like I, it was there. So when you're maybe maybe yeah. trying to make it masterhood, yeah, your yeah experience, yeah, because yeah, in experience. the Northwest that wasn't the case. Um, one of the uh, old, uh, one of the women who was um, Washington women of leather, who, when I first got into the public kink scene, she was a big, powerful trans woman who was also a title holder. Um, so it really depends regionally on when you come to the kink community. But for me, when I first debated uh, transition, I, I yeah, go ahead, please. I'm sorry if that's how to uh, for, no, 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 you know, you're, grand, you're given a title simply because you volunteered a ton in the community or there's whatever. A there's, or there's a pageant or there's whatever. And these are titles that usually are then held up to high regard because you've earned some of the respect within the community. Uh, the, the biggest one is the... Um, International Mr. Leather, International right, Ms. Leather. Right. Those are the ones that... Uh, that if it, a layman in the community would, would know, but there's all the way down to like... You know, uh, county ones and right ones at uh, specific well, bars, and, and we could go an entire conversation around what, yeah. where this comes from, which is predominantly to sell drinks. Right. Um, originally, if we're looking back at the gay men's history, that's true. Um, <laughs> but the but the thing is, is that it's but the 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 fact that the community was progressive enough, even in that time period, to allow somebody who was trans to well, the, the, to even the notion of allowing like Stonewall riots are started by a pair, like in the gay, in the gay community, right. Stonewall riots are started by a pair of women of color, right? The first women, the first people who threw bricks were, were trans women of color. The trans community history, and especially the leather, and, and the gay leather history community, have a rich and complex inter- interlacing in this. Right. But I, what you bring up before is this, this notion of like the transgender community and what gets read as the heterosexual community and or pan community, depending on which sub-communities you're part of. Right. Um, it, I think it's very regional. It's a matter of who is out, and I use out on purpose because there are, I have met, in parts of, say, the swinger community, People who go, oh, well, we're all cisgender. We're all people who are assigned to the same gender that we are now identifying. We're all cisgender people here at the Swinger Club. And I know as a fact that over there is a trans woman. Right. But people don't talk about it because that person Mm -hmm. has had a surgical procedure of some sort or is in a different part of their life and they're not out about their medical history. I know a lot of transgender men 
who in the leather community and whatnot in the kink community aren't out about their medical history about being assigned female at birth. And they don't have to be. Because they don't have to be because they're not dropping trow and or they're not being sexual with people and or nobody's sharing their histories. Right. Right? Nobody's sharing their histories. But it's also so, dangerous in certain places in to be places. out and to Absolutely. be outed. So that's something Absolutely. that I, I think because... You know, I have dated um, all kinds of people. I've dated yeah. the first uh, trans guy I ever dated. I was 15 years old. Brought him, you know, we, with, with my dad. He was transitioning in that process, and my parents were super yeah. comfortable and fine. And but it was the first experience I had having a trans lover, and like there was there was so many looks that we would get even being in San Francisco mm -hmm. in like you know 2009, 2008. Yeah. We would get so many looks. I can't even imagine like being in another place. There was a lot of things oh, that like and yeah. and obviously we're going to hate crimes and all that but like there is so much around this and i think being a queer person even though i'm you know i am perceived as cis and i'm not trying i don't identify with the trans label but um i i can feel some of that like i feel like i'm an invisible person sometimes yeah. i think we've talked about yeah. this i feel like i'm invisible but i think right. when you when you're like the whole passing thing is a whole nother conversation right. but what I would like to say, Master, is that I think because you haven't had any of that kind of experience, your awareness of it is just from a different place, right? You're coming from where, a different place. Right, but that's right. But that's, right, but yeah. that's but that, I think that but that's the thing about it is that there's a lot of people who live in Arkansas, who the Little the, Rock has a great scene, by the way. And I'm not. And I'm not. And I'm not. Sorry, I'm but, being, I'm being but, but what I'm saying is, is that for the longest time, the "Quote unquote straight kink community was here, and the gay leather trans community was here, and only on very rare special occasions would they interact." And I would like to strongly state again: this is a very regional discussion. Right. That is not the case in Seattle. It was not the case in the Big Island of Hawaii. Mm. I can think of never other others where that's not just not. No, no, no I'm just saying so. that it, it's just, I for me that's for you what that was your experience. that Thank was the yeah. that's the that I'm coming from that that's the when gotcha, I was gotcha. when I was in L. A. Right. during my you know my coming up yeah there, the there was you know the the, the right. late late 90s early 2000s right. there was a divide. That's fair, L. A. I can tell it. Yeah, that's you know fair. there yeah. was a there was an absolute divide. Right and. It just happened to be that one of the people that I played with happened to be, you know, to be trans and had already medically transitioned and the whole nine yards and everybody who knew it was like oh okay that's who they were. Right. Anybody who didn't know it was, not it wasn't an issue. Right. You know. Because there's and, this thing that's called passing privilege. Right. right. Um, where if you see somebody and you're you know you're sitting at a restaurant people do a cursory glance and there's not a thought of what is that person's gender story. It's a, oh, that's right. a guy, oh, that's a girl, you know, et cetera. Right. It's within the, and when I say privileged, that doesn't mean I'm privileged to look the way that I do. It means that culture gives me certain things that I didn't even ask for over right. other yeah. transgender people yeah. who can't grow a full big bushy beard and look like they're from Alaska because they're currently living in Alaska. Right? Like, <laughs> And especially um, a lot of, in my experience, a lot of trans women have yes. a lot of struggles with that because yes. of, of hormones or the nature of hormones and certain things are able to fit into these societal standards, you know. Well, there's an amazing scene um, in uh, Trans America. Hilary Duff is playing a transgender woman and it's a story about a, a woman who goes cross country with her son uh, and they end up at an uh, Avon party. Right? They end up being at a makeup party where all these group of transgender women are all learning how to put on makeup. And the main character is off in a corner talking with another transgender woman and looks across the room and goes, oh, poor dear, she's never going to pass. And the other trans woman says, that's our Avon lady. Oh! <laughs> right? Because even what a woman is supposed to look like exactly. in our culture right. is so, like, it, it belittles so many women's journeys. Right. It's not about being cisgender or transgender, right? Cis right. is same, trans right. is, uh, is across. Right. Um, like, it's not about cisgender and trans women. It's the number of women who receive oppression. And if you then combine yeah. it with homophobia, yeah. right, which is I'm scared that I, like, I'm a dude and if I get seen, like, checking out another dude, that, like, I might be a horrible human being, so therefore I must be horrible to all people who right. are like that. Like what you said, your experience of having the partners that were males, that were het and whatever, right. were saying, like, oh, what does this make me? Yeah, does that, make, does that make me gay? Right. Um... And there are a lot of folks that I meet that who have had partners in the past that have transitioned, 
that then have to go on that journey for themselves who have never asked themselves that question before. Because they've always known their orientation. They've all known who they're into, orientation, who, how we right. orient. Um, that if I know my orientation is straight and I know that I'm into you and then I've never had to ask these questions, suddenly me transitioning had these guys like taking a moment of pause. Now, is that something that when you started your transition that made you think, oh, me transitioning is going to affect these people this way? So, is it, do you, under, yeah, you understand where I, I my question it. is coming So there's from? layers to that question. First is that I tried to transition as a teenager, and I was turned down because of my orientation. Oh, yeah, I remember reading something about so, that in your um, blog. Or... Yeah, so when I was a teenager, I, I started my, my first master asking me this question. I then, you know thought about it and I went to therapy and my mother said yeah you should go to therapy about that I'm not going to hate either way like I love you what name do you want me to call you um and I was turned down because the therapist said um there was a thing at the time called the Benjamin Standards that were in place in the 90s um starting in the 70s I believe and then through the mid 90s um that said that if you were going to medically transition if you're going to be transgender right to trans to go across gender experience um you had to fit specific societal molds you know, you're going to become a heterosexual, happy person of this other gender, get married, adopt kids, have 2.4 kids, and a white picket fence. Right. And that's also when it was in as a men mental health. It was still a mental health, mental illness, yeah. Yeah, mental illness, and yeah. very much, very oppressive, like. Yeah. Um, and so with that still being the case at the time, my therapist turned me down because I was what would have been, what, what I was labeling at the time bisexual, right? That I was predominantly sexually interested in men, but also interested in women. And she wasn't going to approve that. Uh, she mm. used actually some pretty cruel language when she finally did the did a summary with me, um, and uh, dropped the lovely F word. Um, and it was, uh, and so for me, what I ended up doing as a processing tool for my own journey was I went, well, I'm not allowed to be the guy that I think I should be, so I guess I'll go be high femme. Right. I'm okay. Right. So it, it, I this swung. is where. Yeah, this, this is because I'm. This is, this is what I'm hearing is exactly what I've seen on the other side of the male to female. Yep, of somebody going full uber butch, join the yeah, military. Yeah, military. Yeah. They, they become a firefighter. They become yep. a police officer. They yep. become a chef. They become, you know, and it's like they, you know, they start riding, you know, they start riding motorcycles Motorcycle. yep. and, <laughs> yeah. and it's like they 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 do absolutely yep. everything possible to reject that part of them yeah and that's what i'm hearing that, that, you, yeah. that you that you did but in, 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 a, in, in a very yeah. in a very instead and of you're kind of forced into it because you felt like you didn't have a choice right well so uh, that's a complex topic and i know okay. a lot of trans people for whom that is their journey Okay. For me, I was really blessed that by this point, like even if I wasn't in the public community at this point, I had been playing privately with people and was turned on to concepts of things like age play and animal role play. Right. And so the idea of playing with gender in the bedroom wasn't taken away from me just because I didn't medically transition. Right. But I mean, in general, in your life, like being able to live your life, because this therapist basically was like, nope, you don't fit the box. So right. you're not going to be able to medically transition or necessarily live your life. I mean, you right. could, in theory, you could dress as you wanted, but right. you wouldn't be able to get access to hormones. You wouldn't get access right. to, you know, these things. And at that time period, there's a lot more of, I feel like, constriction around those things. Yeah, well, mid-90s, um, I mean, again, it depends on which sub-community you're in. And by that point, I'd been part of a street punk community. And so the idea of throwing giant pieces of metal through your face and big tattoos and shave your head, like, that's right. part of a subculture I had been around. You're in Seattle? Yeah. For, for context? Seattle whatever. and Portland. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and so up and down the Northwest, and so with that being part of what was available in the 90s, like it's not, like the transgression of what was gender norms was already accessible. Right. But for me, I think there was a part of my body that went, well, what's the closest thing I could be to a drag queen? Mm. If I have to be a woman, gotcha. what can I be that is in the closest spectrum of things that I can understand as things that I would want to be? And high femme has a mirror in it in gay men's culture to drag. Right. right. And so, like, there was this piece where I'm just like, oh, I see my way forward. I could be a sexually liberated creature because suddenly, as a big-titted girl, I have access to sexual communities. That's fantastic. I can still be sexual with men as well as play with women on occasion. That's fantastic. Like, it was these things where I'm like, well, if I can't do this, how many silver linings can I find? Mm -hmm. And it was such a, like, there was these moments where I look back and go, like, er, I could have done this, but you know what? I wouldn't have gotten the amazing 10 years of adventure that I got to have 
pursuing this first high femme and then like were you in the switching modeling back and then? forth. Were you in the modeling at that point? Um, not not quite yet. Oh, okay. No. So um, it was the modeling as a. Um, so by modeling, kind of, we were referring to like, adult film modeling. Yeah. Right. Yes. Right. They when they, they, the the fetish work and so yeah, on yeah. And, and stuff. Was that kind of like you like an ultimate f you to what or an what art you? Or it, a, I mean, you're like you're like I'm gonna go so far <laughs> that no. I'm not just I'm not just going to you like you said you know, yeah. I've got to stay you know, I've got to be a woman so fuck right. you I'm going to be <laughs> uber woman by being out there I and would be doing dominant all this. That, yeah. Yeah. Um, so we now rewind to when I'm 12 years old. <laughs> <laughs> I am an art nerd. My original degree was in arts administration. I used to help run museums and galleries, and that, that was my gig. Um, and so I uh, went on the professional side for a bit. For a bit. And, uh, and so here I am, 12 years old, and I went to an art show that to this day I can't remember now if it was at the Seattle Arts, uh, Seattle Arts Museum or the Bellevue Arts Museum, but it was in Washington. And uh, I went to this show, and it was this guy's life art retrospective, right? It had his paintings and sketches okay. from different periods, as well as the affirma of it, right? As well as the, the physical little objects, the, like... Mm. Um, the, like all the paintbrushes. Or... No, 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 like or... his letter to his mother, and there's a painting of his mother. Oh, right? okay. Like that kind of stuff. Oh, okay. or like, like a tangible... A tangible... Like, like that you could see, like, oh, these are the artifacts that go with this story. Oh, okay. Hmm. And I wandered around, it went through his like realism period and his impressionistic period and all this kind of stuff, right? Through the course of his life. And I remember it hitting me that I wanted to do that with my life. Hmm. And that I wanted to have something that after I died, people could be able to go back and look at my stuff and look at my art and like have it be like that would be a really cool thing to do. But clearly they've already done it with this guy's life, so what should I do? And somewhere between twelve and thirteen. I remember making the decision that I was going to track my sexuality. Because mm. here I was starting up in the period of my consensual sexual exploration, right. you know, as, a, as an early teen and being like, I want to track that. So I have porn of me or what would get called kid porn of me that I was shooting of myself as I was developing as a sexual human being. Mm -hmm. And so the question sometimes goes, well, did the art come first? And so the kink grew out of it? Hmm. And the porn grew out of it because you were already self-portraiting and journaling. And so therefore, I mean, honestly, my old PC Easy journal, my online journal, <laughs> turned into my website, ropelover.com, because my bandwidth took up too much stuff. Because I was journaling about my sex life and mm. posting images. And that turned into, by that point, I'd already started doing adult film work, but like, but not much. But it turned into me having my own site because... I was already, so it's like this chicken and egg process, right? right? What comes first, um, gen, like uh, porn or is it art? If, is it porn or gender awareness? Is it gender awareness or art? Like they become it this, sounds like it's all kind of there. It's, it's just a part of your journey. It, it yeah. sounds like we're very much of a, like a Venn diagram. Very much thing. so. So, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. so for me, what ends up happening is that when I, like, I end up going into the community being like, all right, I guess I'm going full femme. Like, let's do mm -hmm. this. Um, except for in my bedroom on occasion. I would play with stuff where it's like, okay, well, I'm with a guy who's bisexual, and while we're here, I'm going to have him call me boy. Right. right. How did you feel? That's, sorry, that's what I want to ask. Yeah, I know. How did you feel when you got those opportunities? Is it like... When you were being the high time and you were having those scenes? I don't know if I have a strong recollection to that answer. Okay. I was just curious yeah. if there was any like, oh yeah, yeah That's an or... interesting question. No, I, I think... Sorry, I like to focus a yeah. lot on the feeling. No, it's and, good. Like, the it's good. Um, we've talked about this a little bit off camera, and I've, I, for people who have listened to my blog, my journal, my uh, podcast, they've heard this a little too. But there's this concept I was introduced to by uh, Diamond Blue um, of the idea that we're each gemstones. Yeah, I love that. That have different facets, and you can turn to the different facets, and they're all authentically you. It's you who you are with your parents, right? You who you are with your lover. They're they're right. both authentic. They're all pieces of you. But. They're all still you, right? right? Um, and you could be inauthentic on any of those sides, right? You could be the inauthentic lover <laughs> or the inauthentic right. child. Like it's, um, and I think for myself, it was just an opportunity to switch to a side of my fast, a facet of me that didn't get to come out as often as anymore. Mm, okay. Um, and to this day, I mean, this is kind of skipping ahead to the punchline, but to this day, like, I wish I could be a shapeshifter. Mm. I would love, like, if you took a snapshot of my brain right now, I would love to be male presenting slash this in some spectrumness, 85 to 90% of the time. Right. I would like to be female, eh, 
5 to 10% of the time. And I would like the other 0 to 5% of the time to be a cactus, perhaps. Or, right. or a tree. I don't right. want to be a tree. Um, so for me, like we go back to this notion of like, you know, what is it like at that time period? It's about the fact that here I am as a, as a curvy woman who is getting to play with the men and women that were connecting with both me as a human being and with me as the body that I was rocking. Because right. there are people who play with each other, either in the swinger community or in the kink community, because you're like, I want that, rather right. than I want no, you. And I, no, 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 yeah, and, I, and, that's, and, and that's the thing, one of the things that I, I find interesting and fascinating in the community where both are things that happen right. and both are acceptable. Yes. And, and that's the thing, it's like, okay, I want to play with this woman because she's got huge tits. And it's like, oh, okay. If you're trying to do you know? Do you that, know what? Right. You know, you know her anything about her? No. All I know is she has these great tits right. that would be fun to play with. Right. And it's like, in the community, we're not we're not going to go. Well, how dare you? Right. Because the thing about it is, is that for every guy that does that to a girl, there's a girl that goes, that guy's got a big dick. Or there's a girl who's like, I want to play with that tit. Yeah. Right. Like, <laughs> and, and, that, and that's the, the greatness yeah. of the community. It's like, it, it's yeah. like we can do both. And if we accept that, it's like somebody might want to play with me because, oh, I saw you do, you know, some electric play and I would love to do yeah. that. They have no interest of, with me as a human being other than the fact that I happen to own this piece of, you know, technology <laughs> that happens right. to, be, to send electricity through it and goes, bzzz. Yes. And that is something that turns somebody on. Yep. And it's like, I get that. I accept that. And I'm like okay, what can I gain from that experience? And sometimes it does go to a personal level. Like, yeah. I, I can only speak from my Please. experience as a curvy, you know. Um, I d definitely pass this test. I'm queer for everybody that's on there. I identify as a femme, so I do identify with the feminine, but um, I don't identify with, like, being a woman. So for me and my body, I have had... I feel like I have a lot of access. Mm -hmm. Like you're saying, like, there's yeah. a lot of access. Like, there's a lot of people that... You know, and there's always this conception in society, especially in the community, that, like, women or people that, you know, appear to be women or, I guess, are women aligned, yeah. um, to use that language that somebody using that language, um, <laughs> got feedback on language, so I'm trying to use the language, um, but basically that they have more access to sex and that they're more able to well, this is, get this those. Is the, this, is well, the, this is one of the, 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 the good and bad things, depending on where your point of view is from the community, is if you come into the community as a female body person, mm -hmm. your access to play partners is... is well, presenting as female. Let's we'll right. say presenting as female. Let's we'll right. use that language. Yeah. Uh, is, is greater than somebody comes in presenting in, in a male body. Ah, oh, depends on the sub-community. But, but again... Ooh, that's but, true but if you're going to a gay... That, but I'm saying, but if, if, I'm going to, if I'm going to... No, no, no. I'm talking about also just some parts of the, the what gets called the straight community or the pansexual community, where there is a lack of male doms or a lack of male submissives. Mm, like, that's true. You will end up with a male dom with five women available to them and two guys and whatever because there's only one available in the local community. Right. Ooh, that's a good point. Um, so it's really about where is there a shortage and where is there a desire. Mm. And when you talk about this notion of like there are people who do it for both these different things, to me what's important to know is are we both on the same page? Right. right. Are, do I know you are playing with me because I have big tits? Exactly. Right? That's the important because part. Because if I think that you're like, oh, Lee, you're the most amazing person ever, and I've always wanted to get to know you, and but what you're actually seeing is those are some hot titties, right? Like, <laughs> not that you say, speak like that, but like, I'm a persona, like <laughs> on a rare occasion, yes, yes, I do. Yeah. But see, for me, because I like to play, I like to play a lot with energy and like the yeah. essence of a person. So I, I'm into tits. I like tits. I like mine. I like other people's tits. But I, I would be more invested in the person and the tits. It'd be like a package for me. Personally. Yeah, and, and this is this is somebody that we've gotten to a, a point where uh, <laughs> you're gonna hit this on camera. <laughs> oh, I've got a fuck on camera. Why the fuck not? Uh, she wasn't very comfortable with me playing playing with the rest until she realized she could play with mine. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Uh, well, and what I love about that is, is the idea of how do we connect authentically with the person in front of us. And so for me, whether it was back then with the curve, the, for, the form that I was in, right, the, the hourglassness, or whether it's me now with a flat chest and fur, there are people who say, I want to play with you, Lee. And what they mean is they want to play with me. And there's other people who say, I want to play with you, Lee. And what they mean is I want to play with different parts of your body. Right. Right. 
or I want to prove to you, Lee, and what they mean is they want me to be a vending machine, to quote my friend Jeff, a vending machine for, machine for my toy bag, um, or a life support system, right? Um, and those are three very different things, and that comes up especially in the transgender communities around fetishization. Yes. That there are people who are like, I want to play with a trans man, because what they're thinking in their head is, I want to play with somebody who has a beard and a pussy. Right. Not all transgender men have not had bottom surgery, right? That picture comes from the idea that, oh, you might have a hormone, so you now have fur on your body in some way, shape, or form. And maybe you had chest surgery, you had a torso reconstruction to have it have a flatter presentation. Um, or there's people who've had various genital surgeries. Um, and I meet a lot of people who are, who are fetishists of transgender men, and what they're saying is that I want somebody who is furry and has a cunt. Right. Um, and that's a word that I use, um, that I find empowering, and other people would be turned off by. It's like, cock dick, you're not being, you got, I can use the swear words, right? Yeah, so, I, I, yeah, yeah. 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 I use No more too. monetizing, so fuck you, you two. Cunt! Yeah. <laughs> cock, 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 cunt, cunt, cunt. <laughs> but, um, I, I love your filthy holes, shove <laughs> them in me. Wait, <laughs> um, for, for me, it's, it's for me. That's what it does for me. <laughs> For me, I, I mean, I'm, I do admit I have a very soft spot for, um, for trans women. And it's not, and I, and I, you know, and she's gone, oh, it's just you were fetishizing. I'm like... Because I'm very more. sensitive to that, right, of course, to me, right? It's, it's, I'm very it's sensitive. Like, yeah. It's like, you know, it's like, that might be on the surface level, but there's something other than that. Exactly. That I, th that I think that that's the thing that, like, for, you know, for that a lot of people don't get is that it's like for when you, like your transition the amount of work you had to do not just physically but mentally and emotionally oh, yeah. and all these other things and then on top of that have to still be within the BDSM kink community yeah. that I'm, I'm wondering right. where where in at what point did the 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 this process did the they they the your the people you were around go oh that's who you are now so 24 25 somewhere in there um i shaved my head um and that has its own story behind it but it's at, at that point i'd already gotten two brandings one by fakir musafar and one by claire dubois um and that was that this yeah that story takes place in 2000 is the brandings um one was a man and one was a woman because I started using the term internally as either bi-gendered mm. or that term wasn't really being used. So I started, I was turned on to the notion of two-spirit, which is a word yeah. um, from native lexicon, yeah. um, uh, from Ojibwe language specifically. Um, and I have since stopped using that word because there's such cultural trauma around white people taking the words of yeah. native uh, and indigenous of people with uh, indigenous experience that I refuse to use that word because I consider it appropriative because there's so much trauma there. Well, I, I um, think I think that there's also there's also the um, the other kin community, which um, could could do a very similar style model, but they had to do with things like dragons, right? You know? um, other kin and Therian being words that are mm -hmm. used out there for people who um, who have who experienced their for myself, say for example, was assigned female at birth, but experienced myself as having a male soul is one way it could be looked at, which isn't quite my truth, but it's a simplification. Um, and for the for people who are Therian or other kin, it's they are assigned human at birth with their form, but right. might experience themselves as having a different animal or species experience inside themselves. Yeah, um, for me, it was um, it was this interesting transition point because like it was a, it was a up and down across the entire time period from when I was told I couldn't transition, where I had a period of time where I'm like, well, I'm just going to be a word that would be used nowadays is gender queer. I didn't have the word at that time. That was still an evolution of language. But I'm just going to go all over the place right now. For a while, I was like, I am bi-gender, and I have a masculine part, and I have, a, I have a, male, a male part and a female part. I have a masculine part and a feminine part. Um, and I'm going to acknowledge that both of these are in my body. Right. Um, and at 26, I finally had a bit of a mental health day on my 26th birthday, um, where I was in Manly, Australia, and I went, fuck this noise, I can't do it anymore. Mm. And I shut, threw off my shirt, and I screamed and I cried on the beach and mm. thing, you know, whatnot. And it was very dramatic. And um, said I wanted to have chest surgery. Mm. I hadn't decided yet that I was actually going to medically transition. I just needed to know I needed to not have this going on. And uh, 
and it was really interesting that when I did decide to start taking hormones, that my body was like, yeah, this is what my body needed to be doing. Mm -hmm. um, I was physically and mentally and emotionally healthy, happier, and whole. Right, and there are uh, also gender fluid people that, yep, don't that choose take hormones, not, and that's yeah, and they choose not to have. They just there was one one YouTuber that recently they got their chest. They were born female, assigned female at birth, and they had their chest removed. They don't identify as male; they just identify as gender fluid. So yeah. there are lots of different. There's experiences. such a spectrum, and there's a story right. that it's all binary. And what was happened? What happened for me in the scene around that time period where I shaved my head? Um, I did a stage performance at Test Fest um, back when that was still. Uh, actually, no, I guess this is still running, but it was back when it was still in New York City instead of in New Jersey. And um, and it was a, it's a song, Too Pretty, um, by uh, by TLC. Uh, I'm pretty, excuse me. And uh, the whole time I just, I was taking off layers of clothes and screaming and crying. And then I got redressed afterwards um, with a friend of mine holding up a mirror, a, a mirror frame. And he held it up. And I got dressed into women's clothes. He and I, when we were at the time, looked startlingly similar. Um, and I got dressed into his clothes, and we sat there across the mirror from each other. And I took care of the mirror frame, read the mirror frame, and I hugged him. And that was the end of the show. And all the people who knew my gender history in the room, and knew my gender journey, all my loved ones, all my friends, all my play partners, they saw that show and go got went got it. We're gonna now be looking at this face on. Like this is what we're gonna actually be doing. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's like I got to have this coming out moment amongst people who already knew me really well mm. uh, before I had any of it publicly. Mm. Uh, even though I never said anything. I just right. did a show that people were like, wow, that was a really powerful piece of performance art. There was also hot stripping, yay. Um, but for the people who knew you and their energy, they were like, this, oh. Yep, we're in a different conversation. We're yeah. at a different level of the conversation right now. Um, but when I came out as that, no, really, I am medically transitioning, which means I was going to take our hormones or have surgeries, that I was going to um, socially transition, I was coming out to people, and I was going to legally transition, I was going to have my ID be, say, now say male. Right. That I was going to be doing these three, um, it became a really fascinating watch of how different people responded. Hmm. Because there were some people of mine who were just like, I'm so happy, you're happy, yay, hugs. Right. Other people were like, I'm really happy for you. But. And ghosted. Right. Because they didn't know how to deal with the situation. I had somebody else that I tried to play with a couple of different times, and he went, you know what? I adore you, and I am straight. And he still adores me, and he is still straight. Um, because his framework of what straight includes is women, and I was not female identified. Me even changing my identity changed his sexual attraction to me. Right. Right. Um, and other people who I played with there are just like, wow, you still have, at this point, a vagina. So, like, at this point in the story when I'm telling you, like, you still have a vagina, and I am vagina sexual. So it was really interesting to see what different people's sexual attractions and interests were. This is um, a really this is a really intense topic. Cause yeah. For me, I'm just attracted to people. Like, and right. I'm attracted to just the person's sphere and yeah. then the physical. So right. for me, it's like I've literally dated people and I have no idea what their genital is. Like, I do not ask them until it right. just gets to that point, you know? Exactly. I don't care. It's, and it's not... Such, but it's such a broad spectrum. And right. I, I used to have people say, so have you had the surgery? Not their business. Well, there's that. Um, <laughs> like, have you had the surgery? It's a medical question, right? right? Have you had the surgery? First thing I want to say is there is no the surgery. There's multiple surgeries. There's many medical transition options that do or do not become accessible to different people depending on their own personal journey, preferences, needs, wants, desires, or health insurance. Yeah. Or financial realities. Um, so there's that. Right. Um, but what people are often asking is, are you a real woman or are you a real man? Just because clearly sure. your entire gender experience is based entirely on a couple of inches of skin. Right. Right. Yeah. Which so are you born you're at everybody's... So you own a vagina. That's, yeah. well, that's the... My that's mother, the my mother, she had to have a hysterectomy because um, she had reoccurring ovarian cysts. Right. Mm. Um, she was told by her mother's sister, her aunt... That if she had a hysterectomy, she would no longer be a woman. What? My mother was a cisgender woman. But my mother's aunt's story was wow. that if you don't have a womb anymore, even if it's empty, even if you don't, if you don't have a womb anymore that can carry children, you have lost your woman card. Wow. Yeah, so the thing that it, it's always frustrates me with the one of the thing the community at large is the boxing 
yeah. concept. Well, this is world at large. Yeah, right. yeah. I mean, it's it, it's, so it's it happens hyperinflated when you're, when you're in Saxon, when you're right. in when you're right because it, it's yeah. Yeah. because it's in, in the community. It's very much of a here's the boxes I need to <coughs> right. Do you tick these boxes? You tick. And if you yeah. tick five out of ten of the boxes, then we can play. Right. You know. And if you pick, you know, you know, eight out of ten, I want to have a relationship. If you pick ten out of ten, <laughs> I want to marry you. Right. And it's like, okay, but the but ultimately, yeah. to me, it's like, how do I feel about this person as an individual? Not like I, I have, I have, have you know, primarily I played with women just simply because that's the world that I happen to travel mostly. But I played with men, and it's been awesome. I played mm-hmm. with transgender people, and it's been awesome. I, you know, I don't sit here and go, you know, what is your specific thing? Oh, because you had, you know, because you were born with this, or because your background is this. Like, yeah. I'm not gonna freak out because somebody is, a, you know, is a Muslim, and it's like, oh no, I can't play with you because you're Muslim. Like, how does that make any sense? So there's a couple of layers there. One is, um, just to point out a linguistic point that might be worthwhile to know, and it's different for different people, um, but there are a lot of people who, who are transgender that don't identify as transgender, they identify as male or female. It's like, yeah. we, people use trans woman as a medical yeah. terminology, right, to say that I am a, a man who happens to have been trans in the past. Right. Trans, right. Was the, the, trans was the journey, not the destination. Right. But there are other people, my former boy has a giant tattoo across his arm that says trans bear. Because his transit medical transition, he was now seen all the time as a man. He's like, no, I want to be seen as trans. Right. That was part of his gender journey. There is a couple, and there are people who identify yeah. that are gender queer that identify as trans. That's why I was saying I don't that identify is... as trans because exactly. that's a separate. That's also a different identity right. it too. It can be. Yeah. It can be. It can be all these things. So with that said, um, there are people that um, like I have women who love women who still like playing with me because I have the same shared social journey as them right mm-hmm. that I can speak quote speak in their native tongue uh, because that's part of how I walked right um, and I have some gay men who don't play with me because I don't have that shared social history experience um, and you know well, that's their line their journey and for me are there moments that that's hurtful yeah it's a little tough sometimes but I think mm-hmm. but I think that's the thing is that it's like you know there's so many people I would have loved to have played with yeah but because I didn't tick their boxes, yeah. suddenly oh, yeah. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not in the club. Right. And it's like, okay. Well, and, it's, and that's where, and that's kind of frustrating. Yeah. Because it's like, I'm, I'm a person that likes to seek experiences. And if I can have an amazing experience with this person, why not do it? You know, and what's the worst case scenario? It doesn't work? Okay, great. Then that just means I'm not going to, you know, that, that just means I just don't go on that journey again. The, but I'm just going to call out really quickly. The fact that your worst case scenario is it doesn't go well means that you haven't been, a, uh, haven't grown up woman in the United States. Yeah. Shit goes wrong. Worse, we end up dead. Like, yeah. I'm just, yeah, for the most part. There, there are exceptions of men. No, 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 and I, and I, and I, and I, and I, and trust me, it's, yeah. Yeah. yeah, we've had a lot of conversations. Oh, you've had the drinks? <laughs> we've had a lot of it's conversations. It's such a nice conversation. No, no, no. Yeah. And I, and no, it is so much nuance to it. I know. Right. I mean, but but I love this notion of the openness. And what I'm hearing you also deliver is this message of love and openness towards connecting with a human being. Well, that's, I think that's... Like but, that, but again, being. but that's why, like I said, it, it, like I was talking to you earlier yeah. about, why, why for 10 years now doing these videos, yeah. I use the term people. Yeah. You know, and and it's like, I'm not, because I I think that we do so much to divide ourselves. Mm -hmm. We all live under this banner of kink. Yeah. I mean, I literally, right over there is my leather pride flag. (laughs) We have a banner of kink. Yeah, I I literally, (laughs) There's literally a cane and a flogger over there. Yeah, I got it, yeah. (laughs) Underneath the Spider-Man has a flogger and two canes. Uh, Who needs to go that far for a toy? I've got a banana. (laughs) There you go. What are you flagging with that one? Uh, gray is uh, bondage, and it was on my right hand side, so bondage uh, recipient. Oh, okay. But really, I'm a bondage, yes. I, 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 I actually, yeah, years yeah, ago. Yeah, I have a moment to type your girl. <laughs> sure. Okay, yeah, what so, are we tying? Wrists. Ooh, yeah. I am down. Ooh, Look, a I quick am, tie. Right? <laughs> and. 
Yay, the end. <laughs> that is why one has bandana in your pocket at all times. It's also yeah. a blindfold, a gag, a handy thing to carry around your grave. <laughs> I actually gave, I gave I gave one on the on the on the Yankee Cody years uh-huh. ago, and it's just amazing how it's, people still think you know don't understand that that's still a thing. It's still community. a thing. Again, yeah. some regional, communities it's like, more prominent. Some, I have yeah. friends in like the lesbian community; they use it a lot. Um, yeah. Well, because the Yankee Cody's there, because then I could cruise you across the room. But here's the problem with that: <laughs> it means I've also ruled you out across the room. Right. And that's what yeah. we talk about: is this idea that we put people in boxes and immediately rule them out. Um, I've been to munches before where people are like, hi, are you a top or a bottom? Yeah. And I'm like, hi, my name is Lee. What is your name? <laughs> um, well, that, and that's, what I mean, that's one of the pieces yeah. of advice is that I, I've always given. It's just walk in as a person. Right. And because looking for a like, relationship. You could, you could literally walk, you sit, sit across the table from somebody. Right. Everything externally reads dominant male. Internally, they're a pretty, pretty princess. Or they could be dominant male, but with you. Right. Yeah. In the privacy of our home, they would love to be on their knees in front of you. Right. Yeah. Because that is an act of love and connection between the two of you. Even if it's not like that with anyone else. Right. And I see that happen times with, with folks who I've played with that, um, that are lesbians or dykes. And those are the languages that they, they use, right? Who are women who love women but who loves still getting to play with me because there's something about me. And it's not about them invalidating my gender. They still see me as the guy that I am. Right. But there's still that moment where it's like, oh, got it. Right. There's a connection. When people ask me nowadays, like, you know, I really want to play with you. Can we play? Like, I want you to tie me up. Can you tie me up? Because I do a lot of bondage topping. And um, I used to say yes or no. Nowadays, I ask a lot more follow-up questions of, well, are you interested in getting tied up? Are you interested in doing something with me? Or are you interested in specifically getting tied up by me? And have people answer that question, because now I have... If somebody just wanted to get tied up, I will refer to them to my friend Joe. Right. Right? Or Steve, more often, if I'm at Dark Odyssey. But, like, yeah, I refer them to somebody who I know they'll... who will want to do a roller coaster ride with them, because they're looking for an activity. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and if that's not what I'm looking for right now, sometimes it is fun to just be an activity giver. And an activity connector. Well, and, and I, I know I completely understand that because there's times where it's just somebody says, "Hey, you want to play?" Great. Yeah. You, you know, it's like I really have a need to bring out my floggers and hit somebody. Right. Okay. You happen to be a person that comes across and says, "Do you want to hit me?" Right. And my answer is sure. It's transactional. Right. Right. But sometimes and, there's like I've been eyeing, like we're saying in negotiation or yeah. in conversation, I've been eyeing this person for like months and it's never lined up timing wise. Right. We're at this convention together and it's like, yeah, I want well, you. I don't necessarily, the activity isn't important. Yeah, like, I want to experience exactly. you. Exactly. And I've had people at play parties be like, I really want to do this. So I'm like, but I want to get to know you. And I'm like, great. How do you feel about really hardcore snack play? Snack and conversation play. That sound good? <laughs> Awesome, let's go have snack and conversation play. Because right. that's where I'm actually going to want to connect with somebody tonight because I have no energy left right. for suspending somebody in the air and twirling them around on one toe. By an anal hook. By an yeah. anal hook <laughs> while they're crying out and singing the Russian national anthem. No energy at all. But you know what I'll have? I'll have some hardcore red vines with you. Like, cool. oh yeah, forced red vine. Play. Actually, that's pretty... <sighs> <laughs> I mean, actually, because you can hit red vines are really hard. They're really they're, fucking painful. They're I've really mean. myself with them. Yeah. Um, well, but I think that's but that's but, yeah. the, but that's another uh, another. I, again, we're we're going all here, place. there, and everywhere. But I think that that's one of the greatness of the community. Like, yeah. like one of the things that I I've been meaning to do forever is um, the twenty dollar challenge. Um, I don't know if you know what this is. Oh, spend less than twenty bucks and make a scene. To but no. specifically go, you you spend you, you walk into a dollar store, like a ninety nine cent store, with a twenty dollar bill, uh-huh. and you ha and you go in and get all of the stuff mm-hmm. you want to use for that night's play using just that twenty dollar bill. Yep. And I'm like the fact that somebody years ago thought of this, and it's something that's in the community. Yep. And it's like, you're going into a store that's known for cheapest shit <laughs> possible. Which I would actually love to throw out, because this thing gets spread around the world more. Um, the modified version of that, of go to a um, go to a used clothing store, or, or, um, or you know, like Goodwill, etc. store with that $20 bill instead. I, I do. I, because then you're not 
creating throwaway throwawayable n- that are nothing but detritus. It's going to end up in a landfill shit. Mm-hmm. I, I, so, I, like that's. I, I'm just. I, I love that game. Right. And I'm trying to plant this seed to well, everyone. I, 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 I do that when I want to do um, uh, um, cutting clothes off. Yeah. Absolutely. It, it's they. It, it would be like we're gonna go to right. go to a thrift shop. We're gonna go find, you know, except for maybe you know the sexy right. panties or whatever. But like everything else is all gonna be like two dollars or right. three dollars or five dollars, and that's what we're gonna use for yep. this scene. I love it. And it's like yeah, you know, and it's like that to me is like okay, but that's the beauty of because right, I'm walking into the thrift store. Going thinking the, ahead of time, you know, going. Hmm. How Love easily it. would this cut? How <laughs> okay? How how long would it take for me to you know to take oh. this knife through that? Yep. Is this a material? And I'm like literally stretching the material, going, okay, spandex. I can't really do that. <laughs> you know, it's like it, most funny. of my knives will not go through spandex. Well, and it's so. really funny, like the, just the notion of clothing when it comes to my transition. Um, the access of which fetish communities I had access to anymore. Yeah. Like. M- all of my latex wear, I didn't fit in it anymore. Right. I had to give it all away or sell it all, um, which was really empowering and beautiful to, to do. But at the same time, like I now have body fur, and most clothes off the rack for fetish wear, um, when it comes to underpants, aren't originally aligned for my body shape. Right. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and like there's those kinds of things that you know bodies shape and change and medical transitions and whatever. But like. That I no longer had an instant easy door into the feti- into the quote fetish community because I didn't have a whole stack of men's wardrobe that's fetish. Well, that, but that's the thing is that it, I think that that's something that's been true within the, within the community at large. the The fetish wear within the female um, you know aligned population is. Oh, massively you know, expensive. The clothing available to women in the United States, period. Right, it's just... Yeah. But, but like, you I look re- at... Yeah, no, that's absolutely true. Right, and but fashion you look at the for men, for, period. Men, right. period, or queer, Don't have you much. know. No, it's, it's like... Know, what I'm it, talking about is that I hadn't yet bought a kilt, right? Like, right. I'm a gil- guy, I want fetish work, cool, I'll go buy, I'll go buy a, you know, a kilt, right? right? I'll go buy a kilt, I'll buy some nice black jeans, I'll buy some, you know, a nice suit to wear to parties, I will... Or nowadays, I will show up in a spandex dragon costume, right? Like the important options you have available for classic right. men's fetish work. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but I think it was just this interesting moment that I had when it happened where I'm like, wow, I have now lost my whole wardrobe, which all trans people get to have that adventure. It is mm-hmm. both positive, right? I get to go on a new fashion adventure. Yeah. Negative. Fuck me, that's a lot of money. Yeah, and it's kind of scary. Right? Like even if people a decade lose plus weight, of too. Oh, yeah. yeah, no, absolutely, because I've gone on that ag- adventure, too. Yeah, and you're like, like, oh my god, all my clothes. Yeah, yeah all like, my clothes. And- I miss my size 40 jeans, um, red monkey denim, dark blue jeans <laughs> that have embroidery on both sides. This was a one-year release. Embroidery of women tied up screaming on both back pockets. <laughs> uh, that goodbye jeans. I yeah. loved you. No, it's, um, I'm totally into fashion, so yes. it's like... It's right. so, so fashion yeah. was gone. I mean, you're, wearing a, me? you're wearing a Doctor, Doctor Who. Who printed dress. It's pretty awesome. That's pretty fucking <laughs> yeah. amazing. Um... <laughs> That, like, I, I lost my fashion options. I had people who were willing to play with me, not willing to play with me anymore. People who really right. ram started coming up to me, wanting to know all about my medical history, who I'd never talked with before. Because they, they knew you were me. trans, or just because, yeah. were you passing at that point? No. Oh, okay. But, like, even now, when people find out I'm trans, it's, so have you had the surgery? And I used to get, I, like, I had a period of time where I got really upset. I, just, like, I had a period out. of time where I overshared with everyone. No. I had a period of time where I talked about all medical realities uh, that are available for trans people and now ask, are you curious because you're wondering about the diverse options available for transgender people in the world at large? <laughs> I, or are you asking because you want to fuck me? <laughs> I, 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 I don't like, in, the kid community, in the kid community, these are two very different answers. Either, right? Right? Because They're there like, might be somebody who is asking, have you had the surgery or have you had surgeries? Because they want to know how many holes they can stick their dick in. Right. And you know what? <laughs> But it's like, but that's the thing, and I think that, <laughs> I, I think that as a as a community at large, we 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 have a tendency to want to know more than what we should. Yeah, be it's offered. not anybody's because, yeah. business it's not, because it's until not, you're like actually because it's, like the, it's like not it's not just like you know it's like somebody sees me and it's like they hear that oh I'm into this thing or I'm into that thing. Suddenly it's 
now I'm a completely different person. Yes. Because, oh. you know, it's yeah. like, if, if how, you know, how dare I, you know, occasionally, you right. know, in my, you know, when I was younger, like to get young college kids, you know, boys over to my house to suck my cock. It was like, you know, people hear that and go, that means you're bi and you're blah, blah. I'm like, Wait, how have no. I changed? It's like, I'm still the same fucking person. Yeah. It just happened to be that, you know what, occasionally that felt good. Yeah. You know? And it was not a, it wasn't a, a thing for me. It's a thing for other people. Right. And that, and, and that's where, what I'm kind of hearing is for, for you, it was, a lot of it was, I've lived with this for a long time. This has been here. This is part of who I am. This is part of what I am. This is, I think, you're just finding out about it, yeah. and now you're going, whoa. Yeah, to a degree, it's, it's interesting how different people change their thoughts on a human being once they learn one new piece of information. Because I've had gay guys that I'm cruising and flirting or whatever at a gay bar with, and I say I'm trans, and they change their behavior style. I've had other people who hang out with a whole bunch of cute gay boys and I'm flirting with them and they're cruising me back and my female partner walks up behind me and they now ghost. Yeah. Right. I've had other people who, you know, at a gay bar or at a bathhouse and we're cruising and we're having a great time and they reach down my pants and realize that I've got a different, slightly different arrangement than what they expected and they don't stop and we just change what we were going to do. To me, that's grace, beauty, and power. Right. And I think that the, I think that as we move forward mm -hmm. that it's gonna have to start with our community mm -hmm. because straight community ain't going, you know, the, the, sorry, the vanilla community is not going to get there anytime soon. It, what do you it, mean by that? What do you mean? I mean, I think that it's, it's this, the, I think there's... With the sexuality piece is what you're speaking with, of? With, the, with the, the changeover in the bodies and everything else is still there there's still a major you mean stigma yeah versus i think the the community is slowly mm -hmm. starting to be more okay with it yeah i don't know if i agree with that sentiment yeah what's your experience lee that's what um i i have found that some of the most skilled and compassionate lovers and play partners who have rolled with the punches and whatnot are random vanilla people that i cruise on craigslist really like are People that like, that don't have the story attached. I think you talked about it a little bit before this idea that and it's not universal, right? I shouldn't say the most, like, because no, actually, honestly, I mean, one I mean, of the hottest, one of the hottest body work through it, whatever things that I ever saw was a safer sex class that Scotty Thompson did at Iowa Leather, Iowa Leather Fest um, two years ago, where this trans woman dropped drawers and she, he, like, Scotty was teaching about dental dams at the time. And he just had his gloves on. He put a little bit of lube, ran off the inside between her legs, and went to town with a dental dam. And I was like, that is modeling hot, sexy time without us overanalyzing. Right. And I think what ends up happening a lot in the kink community is we have such a fetish and obsession with hyperanalyzing. Mm -hmm. With filling out 40-page forms. Yeah. With talking about what the meaning is between X, Y, and Z. Instead of taking a moment and looking each other in the eyes... And falling in love, even if it's for the next fifteen minutes that I'm beating the shit out of you. But I, I think, but like I said, I think that's. But as the community grows, uh -huh. because one of the things that's, that's happening, and I, I think you see this as well as I do, is especially since the dawn of the internet, uh -huh. that the community has blown up. It's huge. It, yeah. It's got, and and yeah. the thing, the thing is that I don't. I think it was all. It was always there. Mm -hmm. You know, um, I think that, I, I mean, I'm, I, I don't have any numbers or, you know, studies to back this up. I honestly believe that over 70% of America has some kind of kink. It's those who are willing to then take the next step and jump into the community. And we're getting a lot of those people. Yeah. But now what we need to do is instead of start, instead of just saying, you know, instead of going... Oh well, you're this, and you're this, because th this is where the whole I believe the whole rise of the switch has uh, come up. Um, <laughs> he wants to talk about this. <laughs> is, this is this like some sort of like Planet of the Apes thing? <laughs> <laughs> I, 
I, it's, just, it's something I noticed. Rise for the power of the switch. It's like, no, it, 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 it's. I'm, the, I'm, sorry, I'm getting distracted by my own like, sci fi subplot line. Uh, it, it, it's something I, that I've noticed yeah. over the past like uh, five or so years mm-hmm. is that when somebody new comes into the community, they don't come in and say, I'm new. Yeah. They come in and say, I'm a switch. Have you had that experience? I've no. had that experience. I, I've seen seen that, oh. and, and I've seen that a lot of people Interesting. who will come in and go, you know, the, the, they'll come in and go, I'm a switch. Because back early, you know, like when I first got into the community, switches were rare. Switches were not a common thing. Hmm. Switches were, you know, one out of ten people. Mm-hmm. Whereas today, it's, you know, almost a quarter to a half of the people at any given club. Mm -hmm. And it's not, and it's usually people that have been doing it for five years or less. Oh. That they haven't necessarily found their footing in the community. Mm -hmm. So to, instead, instead of... It's just saying, I'm new, I'm inexperienced, I'm trying things. They take the safe route of saying, I'm a switch. Wow, that's interesting that you consider that the safe route. <laughs> I was like, yeah, it's not necessarily a safe route. No, 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 but wait, but wait, no, no, but, but, I, I've got, I want to hear what you're saying. But what, I'm, what I'm saying is, is that by saying, I'm a switch, what they're, what, when I hear, I'm a switch, I'm hearing, oh, you obviously, you know what you are, you know what you want to do and do in the community. Versus somebody who comes in and says, I knew, I don't know what I am yet, I'm exploring. Mm-hmm. They then, what, then what happens is you get some of the more predatory people within the community who will try to take advantage of that person that says they're new. Interesting. Versus yeah. somebody who says, I'm a switch... Who are going? Oh, you know what you're doing. So those predatory people have a tendency to stay, stay on, stray away from them, yeah. because if they're new, they can be manipulated and changed and turned into whatever it is this person is trying to make. Versus a person who says, "I'm a switch." They've already said, "I'm going down both lanes." Mm-hmm. You know, some days I'm going more of this lane. Some days I'm going more of this lane, and. I, you know, it's just one of those things that I've seen over the, you know, the more recent years, and it's, and it's become, and, and like I said, it, it, feel, it feels like the new default, oh. because it's a way that you, they can come in and go, I'm a switch, therefore, you're not going to try to top me, hmm. I feel like- and you're not going to try to bottom to me unless that's what I want. I feel like there's a phenomenon too of women or people that are female aligned coming in and just automatically being submissive as well. I feel like there's this, like, I got oh, that's into this cultural game. programming. Sure. Yeah, I right. came into the community and I wasn't sure, but I was like, but they that's were like, also, oh, but you a should lot go of... to this submissive women's thing. And I'm like, okay, I'll check it out. Like, but I didn't I, but really I think know. There's a, lot of, yeah. there's a lot of people that are, that are coming in who would normally do that, who oh. then pick Switch as a way. To be able to explore their dominant side, I want to look into that because I've I've not seen that. So Which I mean, to me. honestly, though, if we're being really honest, like saying you're a switch, it doesn't make you sound like you're maybe necessarily an expert in either. Versus mm-hmm. if you say I identify as a master or I identify as this, it kind of implies sometimes. Well, that, but that, that gets there's into, an experience, that gets into, like. I'm a new dominant. If you said I'm a new dominant, I'm very I haven't done a lot of things, and you know, okay, this person hasn't gone to classes maybe or whatever, versus you say, I'm a switch. Okay, well what's your experience? Maybe you'd be more gonna ask people like, oh, what does that mean to you, right? Like you would probably ask either way, but you you love to ask with people's experience, which I love. Um, by the way, I'm not mocking, I think it's lovely. It's like, yeah, because everyone has different meanings to things. But versus like if you say if someone were to say to me, I'm a switch, I'm like Oh, so what is it, what are your particular things that you like versus if someone's like I'm a dominant or I'm a submissive or I'm a this? Then you have a small, more narrow box right. of things that you th- maybe would perceive that they would play in. Labels are interesting things. I think a big question is who is the label for? Right. Because if I am saying I am a master, because it is a label that I use for myself because I find it empowering, 
it's very different than saying I'm a master and is a way that people can quickly sort us into boxes on who we ever talk to. I mean, a lot right. of people who end up using those labels as a, as a wall instead of a door. All right, and I, for me, it's like, I, I mean, hell, the name of the channel that this is going to be posted on is Master Hook. Right. Okay. Right. That, you know, that is, I consider that me. Right. But you have a journey you know? as well, and you have... Right, I mean, it's uh, like, I, I didn't just pick the title out of the blue. This was something that was given to me by the person who trained me. And it's like, to me, I take that on with pride and respect, and I understand what it, what it means and what, what it is. And then they got people who come in day two and call themselves master whatever. If it gets their dick hard, their cunt whatever, or muffin engaged, I don't think there's anything wrong with it. I just, I think they... <laughs> no, I'm serious. Cause no, no, like, no, I, it, I, no. The problem is, though, that if that's what works for them in their relationship, and they want to have hot, fun play, and it gets them turned on... Awesome. The problem comes in is when they say, I'm a master and expect the same level of respect right. as somebody who's been on a journey such as yourself. No, and that's, and that's, and that's one of the reasons why I... It conflates them. Right, and that's one of the reasons why I... One of the... the and I, and it, I don't... It's, it's a good gauge for me mm -hmm. is I don't ask, you know, how old are you? Mm -hmm. I ask, how long have you been in the community? Mm -hmm. Yep. Because... That's a very different question. Right. Because I, because th there's people that are like me who got in at 18. Mm -hmm. You who got in a little sooner. Yeah. There's other people that don't get in until they're my age right now. There's a group right now in Cleveland that started a number of years ago, and I'm going to mess up the acronym slightly, I think, but it's Cobras. Kinky old bastards and broads really are sexy. Right. You, you mentioned have to have the AARP card to get in. Right. Yeah. And to me, like that's a reminder that I... There are people who, they're one month into the scene and they're 87. Right. right. And I think that's fantastic. And to me, the problem with the master word is that it conflates the two. Well, it's the same, it's, that's the same thing that happens with the, the mistress. Yep. You know, um, and I think that that's one of the things that I think that, um, like, I did, a, I did a whole video about how, you know, that you know, this, uh, straight submissive men should be respected. Uh, because there was like, there was some people talking, you know, because there's this whole thing about, you know, you know like, they, they didn't, you've experienced this, and I don't know if you experienced this before your transition, but they see female body person and immediately go, oh, you must be a dominant woman, therefore dominate me. Okay, I think that during your pro, maybe during your the time that you, you said you did some pro-doming. Yeah. Um, that that might have been some of that experience. Yeah, it's it's the fetishization and the simplified simplification down for you know. Well, it's more of like it's part of again. I think it's a part of the toxic masculinity. It's part of patriarchal assumptions. Yeah. Well, but like that the, all women should be accessible to men's desires at any right. any drop of the hat. Right. But the whole thing about well, one of the some of the feedback that I've heard from people, not my experience, so but is that. Um, and again, it is a cultural thing, right, of how women are raised. But men, like male bottoms, will be like, I want this, this, and this, and this, and this. And then they're not, they're just like, want you to hand them the experience. Versus like female or queer maybe bottoms would be like, oh, back and forth. That's the feedback I've heard. I think that's a fair comparison. It's, um, it's how we're, and it's not universal to each gender, but in the United States, um, in the, in the United States, for people such as myself that were born in the 70s, I'm going to give a snapshot, United States, etc. Um, I know for myself, being raised female, even though I was incredibly, you know, like, grr, powerful, whatever person, right. and filed model rockets, and, you know, was a math nerd, and all that Shaved kind of stuff. Shaved your head, did all these, like... Nah, yeah. not as a blue kid. Oh, okay, well, I mean... My mom cut my hair, though, once with a bowl, because I could have got a knot in it. I was too complaining too much when she was trying to brush it out. She, could let, she literally put a bowl on my head and cut around it. <laughs> That's classy shit there, but, um... I, I, I had a mullet when I was a kid. <laughs> nice. That's <laughs> awful. This is a front party in the back. Um, I think... I think for myself and the women that I know that were, you know, in a similar age bracket to me in my peer group, uh, a lot of it was, we want you to be powerful, you are growing up to be the next CEOs of the future, but don't forget your femininity along the way. Right. Remember how to, you know, which silverware, the silverware set to use. Remember to, to know to always say thank you. Always yeah, keep a nice tone to things. For for me, growing up, 
it was the exact opposite. It was don't cry and yeah. you know, you know, you you know, and it was like you know, you had to be you know, be a man and yeah. man up, yeah. and it was like everything was screaming, you have to be a man, yeah. you have to, you are, you know, and, and it was no thing that said it was okay to just cry. It took away the ability for men to cry, and I think that, that when we talk about like rape culture and all of that kind of stuff, like. But, I think one of that is one of the big reasons that it exists is that men are so profoundly touched star that the only way, way that most men in the United States masculinity cult culture um, the only time you get touched is when you're assaulting someone. Mm-hmm. Well, I want to advocate for cuddle parties. Cuddle parties! They're awesome. I know that's the name brand but like seriously cuddle parties because that, that yeah. gives you and a if you voice. don't know what a cuddle party is the notion yeah. is that you show up and it's consensual non-sexual touch with people just being in a space together. So wonderful. So yeah. Yeah. It's, it's we've, fascinating we've, stuff. We've Scary. done, we've done, two, <laughs> we've, done two, we've done two together so far and we've been invited to a third. Yeah. Oh, so, that's nice. Yeah. And I'm still I'm still Yeah. And that's and this is the, the one of the things that's um, true about this relationship that I have, this is, I have grown so much in my dealing with my emotions mm-hmm. and things like that with my relationship with her that I have never, I mean, I've, you, you, you can ask, I've had to face so many things in my life that I never thought of that were even a problem, mm-hmm. you know, since coming into this. And it's expanded m- my ability so much that I'm just like, okay, where the fuck did that come That's from? That's beautiful. You know? And, yeah. I mean, it's like the first the uh, first party we went to, we were just out, it was by a, uh, out back under the stars, under, near, near a pool, and there was a group of, like, six of us all just cuddling, <laughs> men and women, and we were all just cuddling, and I'm like, I'm okay with this. Yeah. And that was something I never thought I would... I mean, and the, the weird thing is, I had been to tons of different types of parties. Yeah. I had been to s- swinger parties and orgies and gangbangs and all these other shit, and it's like... None of that stuff made... You know, it was it was all... You know, there, there was not that those same connections that I got from this one little time laying on a mat cuddling no six people. No intentionality, though. Yeah. The lack of intentionality and the being able to... So I'm getting into the tantric self That's here, good. but being able to have your yeses and nos, which mm-hmm. in a lot of these... Like, in kink, they do stress it, but especially in, like, tantra and in, you know, cuddle parties and stuff, they really stress being able to have autonomy over those things. And practice saying no. Yes. Because I know a lot of people who have never practiced saying no. Vibrationally, it like yeah. feels very different. They have a lot of exercises where they'll have you say yes to all of these things. They'll have you say no to all of these things. And like for me, I can feel the freaking difference. When I say no to something I really would want to do, or when I say yes to something I would not want to do yeah. in the exercise, I can feel. So it's really a lot of power for people to feel what that feels like in their body. Absolutely. And even for folks who, you know, the notion of vibrational and whatnot isn't language that they use. Right. <laughs> I, find that, I find that even for folks who don't believe in this stuff, doesn't mean it doesn't happen. Right. And so even take a moment to practice at home what it's like to really want a pie, but when somebody says, do you, do you want it? No. Well, what's that feel like in your body? <laughs> yeah, um, I know, right? Because it doesn't mean you're not going to still choose not to do it. But if you note that moment of like, actually, I did want that thing, but I still said no to it, it felt differently than when you said no to something and you actually didn't want it. Yeah, it um, really does. For me, I use the word vibrational. Like, but yeah, 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 no, no, no. I think it's, in, in the lexicon of the worlds that I work with, absolutely. Um, yeah. I, 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 say I that, say that out loud because I think, um, I think sometimes all of these words, even using the words of like, did you transition? Did you? Yeah, did like, you, what does that mean? Kinky? These words get so big and overwhelming. As yeah. compared to saying that when I looked in the mirror, I didn't recognize me. Mm-hmm. That I saw a lovely person in the mirror who I was just confused at, that's who was staring back at me. Right. And that eventually this led to me choosing to need to, choosing slash needing to mm-hmm. have something done about it so that I wasn't miserable, so that I wasn't hurting myself, mm-hmm. so that I wasn't feeling alone, so that I could look in the mirror and see me. And, um, right, right, and those right. words are things that people can understand. Right, I think that that's that's something that I think that a lot of people they don't they don't they, they haven't figured out for themselves is being comfortable with a person in the mirror. I yeah. I, 
I call it the you know the you know you know you know being able to be you know naked in a room. Mm-hmm. You know, I, if you can you know stand naked in the middle of your room, completely comfortable, and not even think twice about I'm naked, then everything should be okay. Because mm-hmm. like I'm looking because it's like when I'm when I it's like I want to be able to you know get somebody to a point of just being comfortable in their own skin Mm -hmm. and that's what that's the that's one of the key things i think that the community allows us to do that the vanilla community kind of doesn't allow is there you know you're allowed to like i had somebody comment on a video that somebody who was into diaper play Mm -hmm. could walk into a munch and say they were into it and everybody go cool so how's Tuesday? Yeah. And I went, yeah, that's exactly right. We, we're a community that basically says, you got, what, it, what's your thing? Oh, okay, cool. Come on in. Yeah. As long as what your thing is, is not involving kids, animals, or like anything. Like biological that, children. Yeah, yeah, you know, or things that are, are going to potentially put us all, you know, at risk of going to jail. Please come on in. Though that last one's a little tricky, given that if anybody who's watching right now is in Massachusetts, Delaware, yeah, yeah, one of the Carolinas, I don't remember which right now. No like, right to hit law, right? No right to hit. Um, so, I, I think. I thought it was, is it is it how many states is it that don't have a, that at all? I think it's five. So I know because uh, that's Delaware and Massachusetts. Right, I know, I knew those. We because... can go- we can Google it and report on the next video. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, but one, um, sorry, yeah, please love before fears. I forget, before yeah. I forget, um, one of the things I want to add, and again, not to take away from your experience, Master, but I think maybe Lee and me will have a little bit of feedback on this, is that there's a lot of, just as there are things with being raised in as a male and a lot of things, being raised in the society as a female, there are a lot of different woundings mm-hmm. that when it comes to like nudity in your body and like there is a lot of programming towards men and all people about appearance but especially growing up as a woman, there is a lot of focus on your appearance. Yeah. Like, a lot. So, I was curious how, like, it even felt, like, do you feel like people's judgment of your appearance changed at all when you transitioned? Because yeah, I mean, it's funny. Kind of... I'm, I'm up 20 pounds right now compared to when I had gotten to the bottom of what I had dieted down. Because I was, anyway, I lost about 60, 50, 50 to 60 pounds. Um, and I'm back up further than I would like to. And if I had put on back on this much weight and in this form before transition... People wouldn't be doing right now what they've been doing. I'm like, you look so healthy right now. And I'm like, yeah. I knows I got my little pudge belly going on right now. Right. Um, <laughs> but, um, but no, it's, it's really interesting to me that people end up giving me compliments. And I think sometimes it's that, yeah, I'm more comfortable with my skin. But other times it's, um, and that shows through and all that right. stuff. But I think sometimes there's an over-enthusiasm to tell people how beautiful they look in their new presentation. And that yeah. might be me being a little bitter. I don't uh, know. I'm checking myself right now. That is hard. That is I'm a hard one. Right That's a is hard that one. I don't know if it's true, but like there's a part of my body that's sitting like with that this, idea. Like, that I like, don't need your affirmation. Yeah. Right? Like within your own experience, you're like, you know, if I'm connected with you and really close, yeah. and you really think I look hot because it's me? Cool. But or if, if you actually think I do, that's awesome too. Yeah, but, like, but if you're just telling really... me to affirm my gender, like, it yeah. doesn't necessarily add anything. It's like the overuse of, you look so handsome. I'm like, what? You use pretty all the time before. I like you calling me pretty. Why are you calling me handsome now? Because we change pronouns. Like, we change words that we use right. for affirming different people's yeah. aesthetics. Well, that, um, that, had to have been, yeah. that had to have been kind of jarring when all of a sudden this was, you had this set of languages to describe you and your body. And then within whatever time yeah. period, now there's this is a complete other set of, and they technically probably mean the exact same things, or at least similar. similar yeah. But and similar, but instead of using pretty, it's handsome. Yeah. You know, instead of gorgeous, it's you know you and know you look to, healthy. I try you to know. mix gen, mixed <laughs> mixed uh, compliments to people. Yeah. Like I'll tell men they're beautiful. Like I'll yeah. tell. I I just think it's it's language is one of these things like you said where you can interpret it in so many ways. Yeah. My curiosity is when people would call if people would call you pretty, you yeah. wouldn't associate it with the feminine or your. So again, this body, goes back to the fact that I want to be a shapeshifter, and since I can't, yeah, be a so you identify with both um, in a way, right? There's some. So 
pull towards... It's interesting. I did a guided visualization, going back into the woo for a second. Uh Um, I did a ritual thing, whatever, where I was supposed to find my embodied inner feminine and my embodied inner masculine and my embodied inner gender neutral child thing, right? Yeah. My embodied feminine was a, a, a was a, a, a dapper dandy, like a la Oscar Wilde. <laughs> and my inner masculine was a very fierce butch dyke. And I went, all right, brain, I'll play. That yeah. That works. All I right, mean, it's your experience. It. I like to, f- I, it's really funny when I tell people my name, because I'm dandy, right? Yeah. And I'm super femme looking, and I'm like, I'm dandy. And they're like, what was your name? I'm dandy like a gentleman. And they're like, oh. <laughs> You got me there! I'm like, I just fucked with their mind. I love this. But it's what feels right to me to That's say that. Beautiful. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. I think one of the beautiful things, I, I got to co-teach a class with um, Nina Hartley um, that was called You're Hot When You're You. Mm. And it's her telling the story of like she and I being in the adult film industry at the same time and like we would be in the same room doing st- nothing. There was just no charge. The minute I came out as being trans, she just went, Zoop! Hello. Yeah. Um, but in a weird, in a weird, right. weird way, out of like all, you know, out of the one, one porn name that you could bring up, you have to bring up the one that I actually like. That's the one I would love. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I mean, I mean, I, now I, I, I've been, I have been, been, weird, been weirdly a fan of hers for a very long time, and then when I found out, oh, by the way, this is her real life, I went. Yes. Damn that! I, I'm like I would I would so love to be in a place in a time where I was able to play with her and have fun. She's just but an it's amazing like, human. But it's like I know it's just you know it's like it's one of those bucket list things that you know. I, would, I have a friend of mine, Randy, who had a shirt but... made that said, "I went to Dark Aussie and all I got was a blowjob from Nina Hartley," <laughs> <laughs> with her permission. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I I've heard somebody I've heard somebody. She's like, there was a there was a. Uh, I don't even know who she is, but. Oh no no no! no, no there was a story where she's she's the longest consistently running adult film actress in the world. She's been in videos for more than thirty years nonstop. Wow! Like the first the first time I she is also a yeah. Star. The first time I ever saw her was in a video. Nina dot com n i n yeah was in a movie called Don't Try This at Home. Good name. Where she wound up playing with this other woman. Had her you know, spread and poured uh, champagne in her cunt. As one does. And then took straws and sucked the champagne out of her cunt. You and cannot I'm like, waste champagne, though. That's that, But I'm like, I'm like, and I was like, I don't, I don't get it. This was like right before I got into King. <laughs> But I'm into it. <laughs> this was the same where she took the the girl that she was playing with had a uh, tongue, uh, had a tongue piercing. Uh-huh. So she took a dart and put it through the tongue piercing on a dartboard. And I'm like, again, don't <laughs> I get <did>. it. <laughs> but yeah. I'm into it. <laughs> and it was like, and it, and it was just weird to find out that years oh. later, here's this person that yep. that was one of the first people that made me go, huh, there's something different out there. And not only that, but she's part of this community that I'm part of. And I happen to run into circles with people who go, oh, I did this with Nina Hartley. I'm like, motherfucker. Yeah, Nina's, Nina's a character. I still bemoan the fact that um, she and I ended up scrubbing a kitchen together with a number of other porn stars. And we were really sad when we realized afterward, like somebody pointed out afterwards, if we had a camera rolling, we could have made bank on that. <laughs> yeah! Seven porn stars at six porn stars in a kitchen wearing nothing but rubber boots? Like, somebody's into that shit. Somebody's totally into that. Um, but, uh... Oh, so... But yeah, saying, that, so yeah. what I was saying with that, with the notion of you're hot when you're you, is that I think what has shifted for me in the kink community around who I play with is that fewer people nowadays want to play with me just because I'm a hot set of tits. Right. The negative is means I've lost a, whole, lost a whole lot of the population that just wants to play with the hot set of tits. There are people that like fetishize me as a trans body, but the percentage is much smaller. Um, I have some sorrow around that mm. because like objectification play is fun. Um, the delight I have in that is that it's often more authentically easier for me to be able to say, "Do you want to do rope bondage with me, or do you want to get to know me?" Right. Um, and, and I think if I'd learned how to ask that question sooner, 
Mm -hmm. would have been really cool too right. before yeah. I transitioned. Um, Do you feel like yeah. the quality of people that you get that want to play with you is, I'm going to use a word better or more more tapped in? I'm going to use a weird word that I, I also have. I, I also acknowledge that I have some weird, creepy fans. Um, okay. That fetishize me as Lee Harrington. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Is like that. So I yeah, still get that. Um, that too, as well. But it was I mean, actually very sweet. I had somebody who like kept on trying to be like, I want to do this work with you, and I really want to do this, and I'm just like, no, I, I feel like if you're gonna do sacred sex work, it should go be with this person over here. Yeah. And she'd bring it up again. No, no, I really, I feel like called. Oh, like if I tap into the spirit in the universe, like it's you're supposed to go down there and she talk to these two people. And eventually, my partner pulled me aside afterwards, and just I was just like, that was really strange. She's like, sir, do you realize she just really wanted to fuck you? <laughs> and I was like, oh. oh. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> See, but if someone said, like, I'm into your work, I want to fuck you, can we negotiate that? You'd be like, okay, I have the information. Right, I have the information that I needed. That makes sense. Well, that, I, but I think, but, but that's, <laughs> I, I think that's one of the, the, the things about uh, when I talked about the Big Five earlier, is that the, uh, earlier when we were having dinner, that is. <laughs> Not uh, on camera. Yeah. Off camera. We talked <laughs> off camera. Big Five. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Communication, negotiation. Communication, negotiation, safe words. Uh, or, or sorry, aftercare. Uh, no, it's, it's, aftercare. Uh, no, communication, negotiations, consent, safe words, and aftercare. Yeah. So we were talking uh, about but the big they, five. Right. But, uh, <laughs> but the thing I think is, is that if people were more open in their conversation, yeah, you can much quicker get oh. to the other parts of it. Yeah. But it's like if you're just kind, you know, if you're coming up. You know, and then and, and we what was it? Uh, we went to was it the newbie party? Yeah. And they one of the things that they said was, you know, to all of the, uh, all of the the you know the new female, um, cause, or no, it was it wasn't no, it was, it was Masters, Masters Den. Uh, Great that, party if you will. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they take all of the male dominance into one room and all of the female submissives into another room. Oh, it's just for that binary type. Of yeah, right. but okay. you can be a trans, you can be any kind of like if you are gender fluid and you identify with one thing for that evening, you're more than welcome. Awesome. As long as you are fitting into the binary, you know, the binary but vibe. One of, gotcha. but one of the things that they, they said to the, uh, to the uh, submissive women is, but you're not going to get a guy coming up to you going, Hi, I'm Sir Whatever. I want to play with you. It'd be more like, Hi, I'm, I'm Bob. <laughs> That's so true, though. It's, oh, it's oh so no, I've it's been Bob. Yeah, it's literally like, Hi. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's the, it's the, it's the, it's the you know, even though oh, these are you know, strong male dominance. Terrifying. They get terrified I mean... around you around around people and it's like but that's kind of you know it's like that's the way everything works yeah. it's not just limited to us it's right. it's it goes back to the fact of we're humans first and we <laughs> fit within yep. you know and we we are raised and you know born and raised in these things and society even though we come into this community and basically say, fuck society, we're going to do what we want. Except for a very small percentage <laughs> of us, we're still those shy, timid people. Yeah. You know, and we don't have necessarily, unless you're in particular clubs, have drugs or alcohol to help lubricate the situation. We're just showing up as, I'm this person who happens to have this title that has this bag full of things. I'm coming and meeting you, and I'm saying hi, and then we start from there. But yeah. see, that's where the connection... See, I, I go on my woo, tra woo train here, but like for me, it's funny because everybody always assumes I'm dominant because of my energy and because of, like, I am very, like, hi, I'm Dandy, and everybody always assumes that I'm dominant. In fact, one of my partners is like, when I met you, I assumed you were dominant. Mm -hmm. And it just, it really cracks me up because it's really when you get to know people, you know, and I'm always a person, I will literally, if I've approached people in a club, and again, passing as a woman probably helps, but some people that I have maybe a friendship with or maybe I know, I'm like, can I grow up your muscles or can I, you know, I have a relationship with the people. They're right. not random people that I'm like coming up to and saying things like that, but they'll give me consent and I'll have this like juicy moment. Yeah. 
You know, that I can ask for those things. But I think that that... And if they say no, I will respect that. But, you know, that feeling like I can ask for those things. But I think that we, since we, we, we have this thing where, you know, depending on the person depends on what it is you want to do. Right. Like you said, some people, you just are going to play with them because of X. Because of the way they look, because of the type of play they can do, because of this, because of that. And there's other people that we want to know... And they also to happen to have great tits and can do bondage, you know. Well, and then there's other people I find that, like, I am so into you that I don't know what we're going to do yet, but we'll figure something out. That's what I was saying. Yeah, yeah it's like, it's about you. No, because, like, I've had people who, who will say to me, like, oh, my God, I, you know, uh, I don't like to get tied up, but I really want to do something with you. And I'm like, cool, what are you into? <laughs> You're like, we will work. We will well, that's where, thing. but I think that well, that's, I mean, but, that's you know, even the... with that, like, cause so, like, a better example. Um, I was talking as a bottom, bottom, bottom. I was talking to somebody about the fact that I would really love to have them restrain me, and they said, "Well, what's your actual thing there?" And I'm like, "I want, I want, I want you to tie me up." And they're like, "Well, I don't tie people up." And I'm like, uh, "And I had to think for a second. I'm like, the thing I am drawn to with you is the idea of being restrained or controlled." Yeah. Because I found the kink within the kink, right? right. And they were nice like, "Ah, oh, how do you feel about being ordered around?" And I'm like, when? That fits the right? need that I desire. That fits the need that I desire, you. right? And I think there's times when we're also trying to connect with other people is that we get stuck on the on the, the story of what we think it's supposed to look like. Or like the right. device. Yeah, it's kind of like when we hear that somebody is a male or somebody is female or like that as a transgender person, I was told by so I had somebody try to give me dude lessons what? when I was transitioning <laughs> on how to help me be a dude. I fucking hate that. I'm sorry. Thank God you're not monetized because... That was ridiculous. Well, I mean, but it was, he was trying to show, show that he loved me, right? He was like, you're right. going to be a guy, I want you to be safe. Okay, well. I don't well. want you to be right as a poof, right? Like, yeah. which I am, but like, that's <laughs> one separate thing. Um, that, that won out in one of the arguments. Um, but it was really interesting because he had a story of what being a man is supposed to look like. Right. You know, so whether these issues are around kink or whether around gender, the idea is being authentic and connected and knowing that everybody's going to run into bumps and being with other humans who are beings that are in front of you and like these are i think these are conscious these are concepts that apply across the board whether you're you're trans or whether you're in the kink community or otherwise right even in work like it's so it's so interesting because yeah yeah, what i feel like the root is here is knowing getting to know yourself and also knowing your desires and tapping into Mm -hmm. that in whatever way or awareness just like okay i think you know oh i noticed lee across the room and i'm attracted to this thing and being with that before you like approach you know like what is that and and then you'll find you'll have more like we're talking about negotiation and conversation then you'll have more successful Encounters of yeah, what you a higher, higher likelihood, yeah. Yeah. So I think we need to kind of wrap this up. Yeah, we can talk <laughs> I have for a little while. no idea how long oh, this video is. Oh, oh my god! Yeah, it was light outside when we started. <laughs> it's now pitch dark. So thank um, you for those of you still tuning in. I wonder if we're going to get this into a few segments. <laughs> <laughs> depends, on, it depends on if YouTube t- rolls back my ability to do long form video. Ah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Fair. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, if not, hey, it's going to be in 15 minute chunks. Um, <laughs> we never did part 500. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I uh, definitely want to thank you for coming. Yeah. You know, thank this was you. awesome, and yeah. hopefully we'll get to do it again in the future. Yes. Um, continue on other topics. Do you want to you know. us your stuff? Talk about uh, it? Sure. For those who are interested, you can find my website at passionandsoul.com. And I've got on there a podcast that I've been running since 2011. Uh, I've got a whole lot of books. I've been blogging since we had them be internet journals um, back in the late 90s. And find out all kinds of free stuff. I also just had my 10th book with my name on the cover just come out. Very which is cool. Queer Magic, Power Beyond Boundaries. Yeah. And for folks who are interested in trans issues, um, you can also go... I've got a book out called Traversing Gender, Understanding Transgender Realities. Which isn't kink specific, but a lot of my other books right. are kink specific. And, um, yeah, I'm just really excited to have gotten to come out, and thank you so much for having me here in your home. Yeah, and, that, yeah. and, and we're, the evening's not done, because we still have uh, that really luscious... Heavy <laughs> heavy. <laughs> oh, she's oh, kidding. Oh, it's, yeah, it's really rich. And Wait, are there straws yeah, that come with this? No, that's a different <laughs> thing. <laughs> we don't have champagne, we're not that fancy. <laughs> All right, so... All right. All right, so I think that's going to be it for now, people. So, be well and safe. Bye-bye!